Hi, this is uh, Bob from Hobby Concepts, and today I've got uh, the start of a new series called Buyer Masterclass. And what I've done is decided to put all my buyer videos in one place, and these are going to be all new videos that I'm going to be shooting as I go. Um, I want to have a multi-part series so it's easy for you to refer back to each individual piece um, if you've got a buyer. For example, I'll have a video just on Hey Winston, just on how to copy sounds with your cell phone and upload them. I'll have a video on how to do turn signals uh, with complicated functions like how to do a turn signal brake light tail light combo. Um, I'll have one on how to uh, install the software on your computer. Just uh, every little part that should make it pretty easy to use the equipment. Today's video is just going to be an overview. I'm going to go over each buyer unit and kind of tell what it does and why one is different than the other. And uh, then each episode will build upon this one and hopefully give you a, a really good look at the system, how to use it, um, how to install it. One of the videos will be a complete install in a truck. And these are going to replace all my old videos so as I put these up, my old videos will be going away. I've learned so much about the product that I can do better videos now. Also, I get great feedback from some of my customers on how to do things. I get feedback from buyer on how to do things. So I'll be showing some things that aren't in the manuals that I think are important and easy to do. Uh, I hope you enjoy this. I also uh, plan on putting this on Patreon if you want to watch it without ads. Um, that'll be kind of an update. I'll, I'll let you know about that, but for the time being, YouTube's the place to watch it, so uh, there you go. Anyway, we're going to dive into the uh, buyer system overview today. Let's get started. So let's do an overview of the buyer system. At least that's what I'm going to call it. Buyer doesn't actually use that term, but that's what I'm going to use from now on. So um, we've got several different components. Uh, that do different things and I get a lot of questions about which one should I buy and which one's the best for my rig. Um, the basics are they provide digital sound, digital light control, and in many cases speed control all in one unit. Now this is the SFR1, this is the flagship product. It, uh, it is a single board uh, it's quite small, much smaller than, for example, the Tamiya MFC. It stores everything on an SD card, so you can unplug the SD card, plug it into your computer, and download programs to it. Or, additionally, you can get a cable that uh, plugs it into your computer so you don't have to unplug the car card. And I will uh, show that in a little bit. So, you've got your outputs to the motor and these little plugs actually fit into the Tamiya style plug and you can put a piece of shrink tubing over them and then the battery plug is a is a, a Dean style T connector. You've got several uh, different inputs and outputs on this board uh, to operate the board itself and to go out to your truck. So in the package it comes with a 10 wire plug. It comes with some patch cables for patching it into your receiver. It comes with a cable to attach an on off switch and a uh, speaker. And it comes with an adapter for the uh, SD card so you can put it into a standard SD slot. So we're going to set all those aside for a minute. We'll talk about the inputs and outputs. So Right here you've got your loudspeaker, and yes, it is in German, most of it. Your loudspeaker, your um, uh, your loudspeaker, your standby switch, and your inputs and outputs. You've also got a, a little reset button down in there, which I've actually never needed to use. So, the theory here is you can take your radio receiver, 
hook it into this board and use this board to operate your truck and it works very very well and we'll go into all the little specific details in a little bit so like I said this is an overview the outputs for the lighting just plug in and that gives you an output there's eight outputs and two grounds actually it's positive grounded two commons uh, on each one and you can add a second one for up to 16 different uh, outputs and then your inputs from the receiver plug in here so that's the basics of this board there's a speed control and steering um, here if you aren't using S bus and those plug into your receiver pretty simple um, so that's your basic SFR1 board now there's different versions of this board for example there's a there's a dual motor version which I don't have here with me which is exactly the same as this except it has two sets of motor outputs now it's important to note these are for brushed motors so for example the dual motor one would be good for a tugboat uh, a bulldozer that type of thing there's also a Henlong tank specific board uh, the HL version and you you guys that have Henlong tanks will notice uh, the uh, the different plugs here that can replace a, a Henlong board and we'll talk about that in a future uh, episode uh, specifically now this version the USM is as you can see much smaller than the SFR also does not have a heat sink on it and that's because it does not have a speed control built into it so why would you use this okay well the first reason you'd use it is if you're using a brushless motor um, and you don't need the speed control component this works good if your if your rig already has a speed control that you really like let's say you've got a crawler and you've got a crawler specific speed control you can add this unit to get sound and lights it integrates with any type of speed control very well it has basically the same um, type of inputs and outputs, volume, speaker. It uses the same plug for outputs for wiring. And because it doesn't have a battery plug, it uses some inputs and outputs here with a little push terminal so you can hook your battery into it, for example. And uh, uses the same type of programming, SD card, plug into your computer or you can plug it into your um, computer with a cable. Okay, so that's the USM. The SFR and the USM are the two best sellers um, for providing sound and lights for your, your vehicle, and they work great on, well, semi-trucks is what I use them on, but ships, construction equipment, crawlers, anything like that. Now, each of these two units needs a software package on the computer and that would be this little unit here. This is all the software on one SD card. That one goes with the SFR, this one goes with the USM. Again, it's important to note that even if you already have an SFR, you need different software for the USM. It looks very similar, it operates the same, the sounds included are the same, but you do need the, the separate software for each of those units. So, and we will go into in part in part number two of this series, the Masterclass series, we're going to go into how to install these on your computer. Alright, next part of the system are these two units here, and these are the trailer units. Okay, so we have a, a Bluetooth trailer unit, and this unit is designed to mount in your trailer and Bluetooth wirelessly to the SFR or the USM. So it basically duplicates the outputs here, again, uses that same plug. And so if you've got your turn signals set up on your SFR, they come right out on your um, trailer unit. Uh, this one is a Bluetooth version, and this one is an infrared version that includes a little infrared transmitter and receiver. So they contact the truck through infrared, this one contacts to the truck through Bluetooth. Uh, these work fantastic. I've, I've got a video out right now, I'll be doing a new one as part of the series on how these operate. They do not need any software 
because they basically just duplicate the functions of the USM or the SFR and give you trailer lights. So now we'll talk about some accessories, but before I do that I want to talk about this, which in the United States, hobbyconcepts.net, which is my website, we, we package a what we call a starter package. And this has been super popular because it gives you everything you need in one package. And I'm going to go through those components because some of those you might want to get if you're buying a unit separately. So the starter package, we get, of course, the SFR1 unit, which has the, the cable and the SD card and all the other parts with it. But you get a lot of other things that you need. The first thing you get is a speaker. Uh, and a speaker box. Now this is a nice small speaker so you can hide it a lot of places you can't put for example a Tamiya speaker. Come on out of there you little devil. And a speaker box which improves the sound. So if you're buying say a USM uh, or an SFR separately you have to consider that you want a speaker and it includes this cable. Now this cable is a cable got one right here that plugs into your computer and plugs into your SFR or your USM so you can program it without unplugging the SD card. I, I prefer this method. It works really good. On all my trucks now I even leave a, uh, a tail coming out of the truck so I can just plug this in and change the programming at any time because you might want to add a sound or change a horn or or do something. So the programming cable, that comes in the starter package. Of course it comes with the software. It comes with a volume control knob and an on-off switch. Now on many radios that have knobs, you can, you can actually have the radio adjust the volume in either the SFR or the USM, but Sometimes it's nice to have a volume control right on the rig, and sometimes if you run out of channels, uh, you might not want to use a radio channel for that. And then the on-off switch just shuts the, uh, the SFR1 off. Now, if you're using a LiPo battery, or actually any kind of battery, this doesn't mean that your battery won't, will, won't not drain. It'll still continue to drain. So. This is just to shut it off temporarily, like during the day. I always recommend you unplug the unit when you're not using it. It comes with a couple of extra patch cables um, for connections to the receiver. It comes with some uh, additional T-plugs, so you can solder plugs on your battery that would be appropriate. And it comes with um, a set of 5mm and 3mm LEDs so you have some LEDs to play with. Now these LEDs are the ones uh, that we sell at hobbyconcepts.net and they include a resistor built in. Uh, you do need to add a resistor somewhere and you can, if you're using your own LEDs, you can put the resistor anywhere in line but it's handy to use these that have them already built in so we include these so you've got everything you need to get started. Now. Um, that's the starter package. Great way to go if you're just getting started in this. So now there's other accessories you can buy uh, separately that are really handy to have. First one is this little unit. And this is called an AKL8. And you'll notice it has this same plug that plugs onto the SFR. Okay, but it has push terminal connectors so you can just stick a wire in and no soldering is required. Now, I have customers who love these to put them in their trucks. Let's say your truck already came with lights. Uh, you can just plug the wires in here and you're ready to go. No soldering. They're also real handy for testing. Um, I actually originally had made up one of these into a test board that I used uh, in my shop. Um, so they're handy for testing, they're handy for experimenting because you can plug and unplug wires. That's one unit you can get. You can buy additional connectors. Okay, those are handy because sometimes you're going to run out. Eight light outputs might not be enough. You might want some more. 
so you can plug in an additional one and get 16 light outputs and that's that's super handy and another thing I've done recently I've taken to building my truck so all the connections from the body are in one plug and all the connections from the chassis are in another so if I take my body off I just pull this plug this stays with the body no additional plugs required makes it real easy for for maintenance okay now a newer item that has come out that's really cool is the LED 8 and what this does is it plugs in to the unit and it has built-in LEDs right here really nice eight of them and boy for testing these are amazing you can plug in one or two of these and now you've got an LED on every output so when you're testing or setting things up you can turn lights on and off and see if this lights up and just a super little unit to have to uh, to do testing with so those are some of the popular accessories you could buy extra switches extra volume controls uh, and for the trailer units they have all kinds of little accessories like a, a motor control switch so if, for example you had trailer legs you could have a switch on the trailer to raise them up and down uh, they have on off magnet switches so the lights will turn off if you disconnect the truck things like that and we'll go into those in greater detail when we when we go over those units so that is the basic overview of the buyer system uh, the pieces and parts that you need to make this operate um, I'm going to take a little quick break here and we're going to talk a little bit about radios so let's talk a little bit about radios and um, what radios work well with this well um, the short answer is any radio will work with this you can use a wheel radio you can use a stick radio you can use any brand uh, I have never found a radio that does not work you could use old 75 megahertz radios or of course modern um, spectrum type radios so uh, there are some advantages to some radios radios over others and I'll talk a little bit about that now as I proceed through this master class I'm actually going to erase some of my old videos because I use radios that I just don't use anymore uh, in some of my early videos and uh, I've got better replacements now so if, if you're liking an old particular radio especially like radio link or something those are going to disappear so let's talk about some of the radios so first off this is the Flysky FS-I6. Super popular radio for Tamiya trucks. It works great for just about any kind of a ground vehicle, um, boats and such. This has been modified with a self-centering left stick. Um, this radio works just fine with the SFR the USM. Now, this radio does not support S-Bus. And what that means is that for each channel on the radio, you have to run a separate patch cable over to the SFR. So channel 1, for example, you would plug in a cord here and you would run that to channel 1 on the receiver and you'd do that for all six channels. Now, the, the disadvantage of a radio that doesn't support SBUS is you're limited to six channels. Even if it's a, well, for example, Spectrum radios, which I really like and I fly Spectrum radios in my airplanes, don't work well with buyer equipment because they don't support S-Bus. So you could have a 14 channel radio and you're limited to six channels. So uh, it's important if you really want to take full advantage of this to get a radio that supports S-Bus. Now this one does not. It does have some great features however for the SFR including a knob so you can do volume control and it has a nice selection of switches and it works okay but what you'll find is shortly after you program the thing and learn how to use it you're going to say wow it has so many features I want a radio that'll take better advantage of that so the Flysky FS-I6X looks the same has the same switch and knob layout but it supports SBUS and it's 10 channels so now what that means is you only need one cable to go between this unit and the receiver and immediately all 10 channels will be available to you so you can use every knob and every switch 
uh, this has four channels here and six channels here so uh, obviously on a complicated truck where you want to do different different kinds of sounds or flashers or whatever you uh, you have a nicer selection of knobs and switches this radio works really nicely with the SFR um, if you are wanting even a better radio than this Fly Sky makes this FS-ST8. Now this radio, as far as I'm concerned, is the superior budget-priced radio to use with SFR equipment um, or buyer equipment. It is uh, 10 channels and it has, this is the deluxe version, this is the only version to buy, and it has a really great selection of knobs and switches. You'll notice it still has six up here along with your two main sticks, but it has two proportional controls in the upper corners which you can use and it has two push buttons on the back which you can use. And you can set up any switch or knob on any channel. Uh, this radio also has a little bit better heft to it as ball bearing gimbals. Just a nice radio to use with this if, um, if you want to, to have a really nice combination that will give you a lot of features. This works really good. And then finally, my very favorite radio is the Fly Sky uh, Paladin EV18, or the yeah PL18 EV. Now this radio is 18 channels. The limit on the SFR, the limit through S bus, is 14 channels. So that means when you plug this in with a with an S bus cable, 14 channels will show up in the programming. But 14 channels has done everything I want to do. And you can also still use the connections on the receiver, so you could use those for something else if you wanted. This radio, however, is very expensive and a little harder to get in the U.S., but uh, it is FCC certified for the U.S., just harder to get. Great stick layout. I mean, all kinds of knobs and switches. You can never run out of anything. If you're super serious about your boat or your truck or your tank, um, this is the the uh, ultimate radio to do for it. So that's just some of the radio selection that you can think about when you're doing a buyer equipment. So in a nutshell we've got the SFR1 and we've got the USM. Speed control, no speed control. Basically the same programming cable works with either one, the same Speakers work with either one. The same volume control works with either one. They take different software. And the main difference, of course, uh, if you're using a brushless motor, like I said, you want to use this, or if you like your speed controller, have unique mounting methods. The programming is very, the, very similar. So that's, that's my overview. If, if people contact me and say, you know, what do I buy? Uh, well, if the SFR, I always say, buy the starter package. You get everything you need. If you decide you need a USM, you're going to want to buy the USM. You're going to want to buy the software, probably a speaker if you need it, and then possibly uh, the programming cable and maybe the volume control. It never hurts to buy an LED-8, to the test strip, uh, for either one. And uh, there you go. That, that's, that's how you do it. Now, as I said in the beginning, um, this is going to be a, like a classroom series. I am going to do an individual video on every single part. And the reason for that is if you have one of these and you say, Oh, gosh, I forgot how to download a sound off of YouTube. Well, I'll have just a separate video on that. So... Uh, it's going to be many, many parts. You can ju just search um, YouTube for Buyer Masterclass and you'll find all the videos. Now, uh, it's going to take me a while to get them all done. The next video is going to be how to install the software on your computer and get that set up, which I have never done and I'm, I've been remiss in that because it's, it's a little complicated and we'll go through that. And then I'll have a video on how to upload and download programs. Now, for example, I can do things on these videos that aren't in the manuals. Uh, the manual tells you great how to get a program loaded and download it, but it doesn't tell you if you have an SFR1 how to 
copy the program off of that into your um, sound teacher software. So I'm going to have that in that in that next video. And then I'll have one video on how to do, like for example, turn signals. Um, uh, one of the questions I get a lot is, can you do a combination brake light, turn signal, stop light? Yes, you can, but it's not in the instructions. So we'll have a video on how to do that. We'll have a video on how to hook up accessories. We'll have them on each little individual piece, how to record sounds on your, on your uh, cell phone and get them into here. Uh, the capabilities of this unit are amazing. Now, you can go onto hobbyconcepts.net, you can look up the SFR1, and you can download the manual for free in English. And you can do that for any of these pieces of equipment. So if you want to put the manual on your computer and read through it, uh, it doesn't cost you anything, and you can look at it and say, gosh, uh, I could never do that, or gosh, I could do that. And hopefully this uh, video series will show you how to do it so you feel comfortable uh, if you have one of these. And uh, it's great stuff. I really like it. It's Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy to use, and the capabilities are just outstanding. So, that's the end of, uh, of video number one, and uh, continue to give me a thumbs up. Uh, I like that. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, also, I plan on putting these videos on Patreon, where you'll be able to get them ad-free. So, uh, you might check that out, and uh, that's coming up. So, Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.